That was the voice of the barking tree frog, Hylogratiosa. Such calls may come from isolated individuals or from several frogs calling together in a chorus. <coughs> As many as two or three hundred voices may be heard in a single pond in parts of southern Florida, where the barking frog breeds along with other tree frogs, toads, and frogs. The barking tree frog is easily recognizable in a chorus recorded in Highlands County, Florida, even though ten other species of frogs were calling at the same time. Such choruses are heard only during the frog's breeding season, usually on nights following prolonged or heavy rains. In some species, the air is rapidly forced back and forth over the vocal cords at approximately 75 times per second to produce a high-pitched trill of the southern toad Bufo terrestris, for example. In another species, the green tree frog, Hylocinaria, sounds are produced when air is expelled from the lungs at more or less regular and well-spaced intervals. Or under special conditions, the same species may shift from one rate to another, speeding up the call at the end. When several species breed simultaneously in the same pond, voice plays an important role in the efforts of females to seek out the males of their own species. The individual voices of several frogs inhabiting the same area are readily distinguishable to human ears as they probably are to the frogs. Suppose we take that mixed chorus of 11 species that were calling simultaneously in Highlands County, Florida and dissect it, so to speak. It is made up of numerous eastern narrow-mouthed toads, cricket frogs, vast numbers of tree frogs belonging to four species, three kinds of true frogs of the genus Rana, and a great many toads of two species. Some of the lower-pitched voices are completely obscured in the din of the entire chorus, and yet individually they're very distinctive. This is a call of the eastern narrow-mouthed toad, Microhyla carolinensis. cricket frog, Acris grillus dorsalis, is the smallest species in the chorus. Somewhat larger and quite different in appearance and voice is the squirrel tree frog, Hyla squirella. preceding call in turn is very different from that of the pinewoods tree frog, Hyla femoralis. Uh. 
or you would readily recognize the voice of the green tree frog, Hyla Cenaria. You have, of course, already heard the very distinctive call of the barking tree frog, Hyla gratiosa. The four preceding calls are those of frogs in the same genus, Hyla. Such tree frogs all have conspicuous balloon-like vocal sacs that not only shunt the air back to the lungs, but also serve as resonators. Tree frog voices are very different in quality from those of the pig frog, Ranagrillio, which has internal vocal sacs. <coughs> somewhat smaller frog with paired vocal sacs that appear as balloon-like protuberances on each side of the throat is a leopard frog, Ranipipians. This is its mating call. <laughs> Closely related to the leopard frog and with a similar but still distinctive voice is a Florida gopher frog, Rana Capito. Its snore-like call is heard here in chorus with a barking tree frog and the pinewoods tree frog. In addition to the narrow-mouthed toad, the four tree frogs, and the three frogs in this Floridian chorus, there are two toads. The larger of the two is a southern toad, Bufo terrestris, with a relatively loud trill. Much smaller toad, the oak toad, Bufo quercicus, has a totally different voice consisting of a short, high pitched whistle. several frogs breed side by side in the same place, there is always considerable diversity in the mating calls of the various species. They differ in pitch, intensity, and duration, as well as in timber and volume. These differences are of importance in discouraging one species from breeding with another, although hybridization does occur. When two species interbreed, the hybrid may have a voice that is intermediate between those of the parental species. This is a mating call of a hybrid resulting from the cross mating of the green tree frog and the barking tree frog. One parent, 
the green tree frog, Hylocinaria, has this call. Here, the hybrid with a higher pitched voice can be heard alternating his call with that of the other parental species, the barking tree frog, Hylogratiosa. In any one locality, all male toads of one species sound more or less alike. However, there are individual differences in voice, just as there are in other characteristics. Most red-spotted toads, Bufo punctatus at Portal, Arizona, stop their individual calls abruptly, like this. but one individual had a distinctive trail that tapered off as though running down at the end. The call is still recognizable as being that of Bufo punctatus. Differences also exist between isolated populations of the same species. Fowler's toad, Bufo Woodhousey Fowlery, for example, has one voice in Arkansas and a slightly different voice in North Carolina. This is the way it sounds at Little Rock, Arkansas. voice of the same species in North Carolina has quite a different quality. closely related subspecies, the southwestern woodhouse toad, Bufo woodhousei australis, was recorded near Phoenix, Arizona. Very often the southern populations or subspecies have mating calls that are faster and higher pitched than their northern relatives. This is a call of the American toad, Bufo americanus, at Monette, Missouri. In the American toad, the pulsations of the trill vary from 29 to 32 per second, with a frequency around 1800 cycles per second. In the closely related southern toad, the trill is roughly twice as fast, with 68 to 78 pulsations per second, at a frequency of 2150 cycles per second. There are similar north to south trends in the pitch of the voice of the eastern gray tree frog, Hyla Versicolor. Near Anglewood, New Jersey, its mating call is a musical trill.
farther south near Henderson, North Carolina, the eastern great tree frog has a much faster, less musical trill at a higher pitch. Much farther south, near the southern extremity of its range in Putnam County, Florida, the call of the great tree frog is not vastly different from that of the population in North Carolina. Farther west, in Monette, Missouri, the great tree frog is still readily recognizable as the same species. A closely related species in the Chiricahua Mountains is a canyon tree frog, Hyla arena color. Its mating call bears some similarity to the call of the eastern gray tree frog, but it's still readily recognizable as being different. However, on the western side of the desert, principally in California, a tree frog superficially similar in habitat and appearance to the canyon tree frog of Arizona and Utah proves to have a totally different sort of call. Its call, as well as other characteristics, indicates that it is a different species, Hyla californiae. Here in Sentinac Canyon in eastern San Diego County, California, it's heard with a Pacific tree frog in the background. Therefore, minor differences between individual frogs of the same species in their mating calls and more conspicuous differences between individual populations or between subspecies. Finally, there are very obvious differences between the calls of individual species. In addition to mating calls, many frogs make several other sounds. In most species of toads, the female is mute. She makes no sound when seized during the breeding season, whereas the male produces what has been called the warning chirp. Sometimes it is a sort of clucking sound, and in toads it is usually accompanied by the warning vibration. Both sounds can be heard in the southern toad, Bufo terrestris. <laughs> This warning chirp, accompanied by the warning vibration, makes it possible for the male to distinguish members of his own sex from female toads encountered at the breeding site. This is the warning chirp of the boreal toad Bufo boreus, a species that has no mating call but still utters a warning chirp if seized by another male. Much larger species, the Colorado River toad, Bufo alvarius, sounds a warning note that is more of a clucking sound than a chirp. The 
warning chirp is also produced by most tree frogs. Here, for example, is a warning chirp of the California Canyon tree frog, Hyla californii. True frogs, that is various species of rana, also have warning croaks. This is a sound produced by a male Florida gopher frog when seized by another male. Whether it is the warning croaks or the accentuated respiratory movements that accompany their production, there is little doubt that such sounds are the principal means of sex recognition in frogs. In some instances, frogs have a special call that is uttered at intervals throughout the warmer part of the year. These calls seem to serve the purpose of advertising the presence of individual frogs to other males of the same species in the vicinity. The voice is employed to maintain a primitive sort of territoriality. In eastern North America, the single notes of the territoriality call of individual green frogs can be heard throughout the summer. These sounds were issuing from a ditch near Orange Springs, Florida. Another sort of call produced by many tailless amphibians has been termed the rain song. Very often this sounds like a half-hearted mating call, although it does not seem to be associated with breeding activities. Tree frogs in Florida often start calling after a brief shower or after a sudden rise in the relative humidity. The noise of the rain or an airplane flying over often serves as a stimulus for tree frogs to start calling. The squirrel tree frog clinging to a limb high up in a tree far removed from any breeding site may come forth with its rain song. In addition to mating calls, warning chirps, warning vibrations, and rain songs produced by one kind of frog or another, many species give vent to what are loosely termed screams of fright. Frogs of either sex often scream when seized by snakes, raccoons, or similar enemies, or even when seized in the human hand. Under such conditions of duress, the sound is produced with the mouth open. This is the scream of the leopard frog. Sounds employed by the same kind of frog under different conditions are quite distinctive. The mating call of the pig frog, with very little modification, also serves as a warning croak. The same frog has what is probably a territoriality call, little more than a snort uttered at infrequent intervals. And finally, if seized, it may open its mouth and give vent to a sort of hoarse scream. Here is a breeding chorus of pig frogs. Its single grunt can be heard in the background of a chorus of cricket frogs.
or when seized, the pig frog emits a deep-throated sound that corresponds to the scream of the leopard frog. This is always given with the mouth wide open. There's a rough correlation between the size of the frog and the pitch of the mating call. The largest of all North American frogs is a bullfrog, Ranicates biana. Its bass voice can be heard from ponds or streams ranging from Canada to the Quetzalcoatlcos River at the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. very different voice from that of the bullfrog, the pig frog, Ranagrillio, also has a deep voice, but one that is nevertheless higher pitched. The voice of the pig frog is much lower in pitch than that of the leopard frog, Granipipians. This, in turn, is lower than the voice of the pickerel frog, Rana palestris, with a totally different sort of call. However, toads with their less varied calls serve better to illustrate the rough correlation that exists between size and the pitch of the call. The giant toad, Bufo marinus, has a low-pitched trill at a frequency of only 638 cycles per second. A somewhat smaller toad with a much shorter trail is a Colorado River toad, Bufo alvarius, with a voice at the dominant frequency of 1135 cycles per second. Still smaller is a Gulf Coast toad, Bufo valiceps, with a longer trill at a frequency approximating 1400 cycles per second.
in the Arroyo Toad, Bufo Microscaphus californicus. The pitch is a bit higher with a dominant frequency of roughly 1,500 cycles per second. It is heard here near Victorville, California, with a Pacific tree frog in the background. voice of the small red spotted toad, Bufo punctatus, varies somewhat with the size of the toads in individual populations, but near Austin, Texas, it has a voice pitched at a frequency of approximately 2,700 cycles per second. Still smaller is the western green toad, Bufo debilis insidior, with a voice at a level of roughly 3,300 cycles per second. Finally, the smallest toad in North America, the oak toad, Bufo quercicus, scarcely over an inch long, has the highest pitch voice of them all with a frequency that rises to 5,200 cycles per second. At half speed, the mating call of the small western green toad sounds a bit like that of the larger species, the red spotted toad. This is the call of the little green toad, first at normal speed, and then reduced to half the normal speed. Further reduced to one quarter the normal speed with a corresponding reduction in frequency as well as trill rate, its voice is not vastly different from that of the much larger Gulf Coast toad. This is the voice of the little western green toad reproduced at one fourth the normal speed. Among the narrow-mouthed toads, the eastern species, Microhyla carolinensis, has a slightly lower pitch voice than its smaller western relative, Microhyla olivacea mazatlanensis. In Florida, the eastern narrow-mouthed toad has this call. Alamos, Sonora, the closely related but smaller species, the Sinaloa narrowmouth toad, Microhyla olivacea mazatlanensis, has a similar but higher pitch call.
Another phenomenon occasionally discernible in mating choruses is the presence of frogs in trios or duets. This is apparent only in the species that have short calls with dominant frequencies of a single note. In a chorus of the plain spadefoot, Scaphiopus bombifrons, a duet can be heard in the foreground with the call of one spadefoot immediately followed by that of another at a lower pitch. <laughs> A relative of the tree frogs with habits resembling those of the plain spadefoot is a Mexican burrowing frog, Ternohylophodians. In this chorus of burrowing frogs recorded near Hermosillo, Sonora, duets are again discernible. Turning now to the diversity of breeding calls produced by some of the widely distributed groups or genera, we shall start off with the tree frogs of the genus Hyla. This is a mating call of the Pine Barrens tree frog, Hyla andersoni, in southern New Jersey. <coughs> small, greenish-colored tree frog inhabiting the western edge of the Mexican plateau has a very dissimilar voice. This is a mating call of Hyla microexemia recorded near Tepic in the state of Nayarit, Mexico. <coughs> call often heard in the lowlands of Mexico as well as in southern Texas is that of the Mexican tree frog Hyla Bodini. An individual herd calling south of Culiacan in Mexico is joined by a burrowing frog Terno Hyla. <laughs> A tiny tree frog, the spring peeper, Hyla crucifer, is found throughout most of the eastern portion of the United States. voice most commonly heard in California at the far side of the continent is that of the Pacific tree frog Hyla regila. found along the west coast of Mexico is a tiny yellowish tree frog called simply Ranita Amaria by the Mexicans. This is Hyla Smithy. One of the more abundant frogs in Florida is a little grass frog, Hyla ocularis, with a squirrel tree frog in the background. Related to the tree frogs are the chorus frogs, many of which have voices similar to, but not identical, with the population of the western chorus frog, Sudacris nigrita triceriata, found at Monette, Missouri. A 
also related to the tree frogs are the cricket frogs. At the edge of the Ozark Mountains of Missouri, Blanchard's cricket frog, Acris grillus blanchardi, has this call. Florida cricket frog produces this sound. In the tropical portions of Mexico, a large green tree frog with the scientific name Agalinchnus dacnicolor often issues its mating call from a tree or shrub. Three of the six species of spadefoot toads in the United States have very similar calls. Those in the east sound much like couches spadefoot, Scaphiopus couchy, which breeds in temporary pools in the arid portions of Mexico and the American Southwest. <coughs> This is a totally different call from that of the smaller plain spadefoot. The range of the plain spadefoot overlaps that of the western spadefoot with which it sometimes hybridizes despite its very different breeding call. This is the voice of the western spadefoot, Scaphiopus hemondi. <laughs> On occasion, all three species breed simultaneously in the same temporary pools usually with concentrations of one species or another in various parts of the pool. All three are heard together here near Rodeo, New Mexico. fourth species in the west, the Great Basin Spadefoot, often breeds in more or less permanent pools. It is heard here calling from a ditch in the state of Washington. Extremely abundant frog along river bottoms or lakes from southern Sonora in Mexico southward to Central America is called Leptodactylus melanonotus or simply a ranita by Mexicans. At close range its voice sounds like this. In contrast, some of the toads of moderate size have voices that can be heard at least four miles away. This is a breeding call of a widely distributed Great Plains toad, Bufo cognatus. Similar but much more musical is the call of the Yosemite toad, Bufo conorus, a species that lives at high elevations in the Sierra of California. Most 
toads call from the edge of pools, but the small Sonoran toad, Buforetta formus, usually sits a yard or so away from the water while producing this mating call. Similar in breeding habits as well as in mating call is the western green toad, Bufo debilis insidior. It will be noted that most toads produce some sort of trill as a mating call, with a pitch depending largely on the size of the species. By contrast, the true frogs produce quite a variety of sounds. So named because its voice sounds like a man hammering a nail into a cabin is the carpenter frog, Rana vergatapes. This inhabits the sphagnum bogs along the east coast of the United States. Lake Pachcuaro in the state of Michoacan, Mexico, one kind of frog, Rana Dunny, has a call that is astonishingly similar to that of the western spadefoot. This is a winter chorus at Lake Pachcuaro with an occasional leopard frog to be heard in the background. Base voice of the American bullfrog can be heard from coast to coast since its introduction west of the Rocky Mountains. It is heard here near Yuma, Arizona, with a mating trail of the southwestern woodhouse toad in the background. have seen, several kinds of frogs often call on the same pond. The composition of individual choruses not only varies with the habitat, but with the region. Some sample choruses will illustrate. One recorded near Tucson, Arizona, following a summer rain, is composed of the Colorado River Toad, the Great Plains Toad, Couch's Spadefoot, and the Western Spadefoot. This is totally different from a chorus near Rodeo, New Mexico, with the plain spadefoot and the western spadefoot calling along with a little green toad in the foreground. the Seminole Indian Reservation south of Brighton, Florida, the green tree frog, Hylocenaria, was breeding in company with the little grass frog, Hyloacularis, but with the call of the Florida chorus frog, Pseudacris nigrita varicosa, conspicuous. Its voice sounds like someone's running his fingers over the teeth of a comb.
Florida, the pig frog, the leopard frog, and the gopher frog, cricket frogs, and two tree frogs are all calling simultaneously. Here is a chorus of 50 southern toads with a few pine woods tree frogs and some oak toads calling in a small pond in an open area near Placida, Florida. Frog choruses are sometimes confused by the presence of insects whose sounds may resemble those of frogs. On the Oklawaha River near Orion Springs, Florida, tree crickets outnumber the frogs, but green frogs, the green tree frog, the squirrel tree frog, and the eastern narrowmouth toad, the growl-like call of the river frog, Ranahexury, are all to be heard, some calling from the opposite side of the river. Few choruses surpass a number of species that recorded near the Archbold Biological Station in Highlands County, Florida. This is a chorus that we dissected earlier, with 11 species calling, but with the barking tree frog outdoing the others. 